How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Saturdays with Jim Valley at 1 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, Sundays with me, 6 p.m. It's Sunday, 6 p.m. It's me. I'm here. Oh, man. A uh, week away from double or nothing. I can't believe that this pay-per-view is happening already. I can't believe everything that's happening in professional wrestling right now is happening. I, I feel like I'm in like a bizarro world. I don't know what happened. Everything was fine, like leading up to WrestleMania season. And then my whole world kind of imploded with uh, just all this stuff going on. Listen, I'm not complaining. A lot of stuff to talk about. With me today, someone you may know, my tag partner on Will Live, pal, Garrett Gonzalez. What's going on, Garrett? Hey, man, I feel like I'm a little overexposed on. Hey, hey look, I'm hanging out at uh, Lance's gym. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like I'm a little overexposed uh, this week because I, I, you know, we did We're Live Pal at Wrestling Observer with Dave. I did my fight game with John and then now I'm here. But like you said, it's been a nutty, nutty week and I hope to try and make some sense of what's going on and hopefully uh, we'll have a good conversation. You're very high in demand right now. I think that's the problem. Your stock is going I up. I, I think other than, you know, I, I think I'm the opposite uh, of Sasha Banks. Like, I just don't have a value that people go, hey, do you want to do this? I'm like, sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. do it. It's fun. Oh, man. Great. You know, Sasha, man. Sasha's Sasha knows her value, man. That that that's the that's a big part of this. Yeah, this has been a well, this is the big story. I guess this was a big story. You know, this shows more like a summary for the week. So I'm going to touch on everything. I don't want to I don't want to uh, go into so much of this because everybody's spoken about it. I want to talk a little bit more about the 70 McMahon situation because that kind of came out of nowhere for a lot of people. But, yes. you know, according to some people, this was brewing for a couple months now. So we'll go into that. But let's begin with Sasha Banks and Naomi and, and how this played out. Uh, it was announced on Friday. Michael Cole made the announcement that they were indefinitely suspended on SmackDown. Uh, and, I, and I'm going to quote him here. Their actions disappointed millions of WWE fans and their fellow superstars. So because of what Sasha and Naomi did this past Monday night, they have been suspended indefinitely. And we will have a future tournament to crown a new WWE Women's Tag Team Champion. Naomi on Saturday removed all mention of WWE from our social media. I, I mean... You know, what's interesting is that early in the week, it was reported that they were really, they weren't going to punish them, right? And they were going to try to make this work. And whatever happened between Monday and Friday, this kind of fell apart here. Yeah, I, I, it's their playbook, right? It's let's show the rest of the talent what we are going to do if this happens again, yeah. right? This happened. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna re we're gonna take your merch away, so you can't make any merch money. Yeah, Friday. We're yeah. going to we're going to shame you on uh, on television. We're going to verbally spank you on, on television. And this is all to say, if anybody else is thinking about this, think again. Did Did you see the uh, the quote from Tony Storm in, in the? Uh, in the Wrestling Observer this week? I didn't. What, what was it? Okay, so I talked about this with Dave a little bit, but I, I, it, it's so necessary to, to bring this up in, in the context of what is happening. So Tony, Tony Storm, you, you, we all remember she did the pie thing with Charlotte, and then she was kind of fed up, and she walked out, and then they released her. So she was talking about the angle with Charlotte in what it was originally supposed to be. So she says... They wanted to do this whole angle where it was like they were going to rip my shirt and I'd be embarrassed in my underwear, I guess. When you're asked if you are comfortable, if you're to do that, and it's like literally people are being fired every single week. It's like, well, yeah, I guess I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Right. And so this the way that, you know, they they can get talent to maybe not cause a stir, maybe when they are frustrated uh, is with these scare tactics. Oh, you know, you may be fired. But the, the and then this is the greatest thing about the existence of AEW. Imagine, let's go back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, how many people had to swallow their pride on things because there was no other option and now there is yeah. an option. So um, that's another angle to this. And, you know, I, you know, I'm a little bit of a, 
you know, I, I would say I am a student of Tupac Shakur, right? Oh, so am I. All eyes on me. <laughs> so, 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 so Tupac's, Tupac's mentality was like, you know, we're not asking anymore. We're taking. You yeah. know, that's how you have to deal with this stuff. And that's where I look at Sasha and Naomi. You know, they probably have been asking for better stuff months and months and months. And then they're given things that they, that they're not comfortable with or that they don't think is, is good for them. And it's like, well, I, I, we've been asking. And now, you know, now we sort of have to stand by our own words and, and stand by our, our own uh, what our, what our own. Uh, mentality is and the things that we tell each other we it's now time to stand on that so uh, I may be leaning a little bit more towards talent than than most people are on this but it's just how I, I see things I, I I it is it is a rare occasion that I stand with management on petty stuff like this almost never see I I, I totally agree with you uh, I'm a big believer of if you are unhappy and you feel that there will be no change then you should think of your other options you should move forward with those other options. I'm a big believer of that. I don't feel that people should feel trapped or feel that they have to do it or feel that if they, you know, if it's going against their integrity in any way or anything like that. Like, I think Tony Storm's situation would have been, you know, okay, so let's let's say that she agreed to do all those things, right? And the day of the show, she walked out. How would people have reacted to that? I, I think the big problem, especially with a lot of talent, because... I don't feel that this is as one-sided of a scenario as a lot of people imagined. I think WWE themselves even thought that this would have been a big pile on on them, but the fact that they walked out during the show was what they did wrong. Not that they walked out or they were unhappy, they wanted to change. I don't think anybody will say that that was a problem. Uh, I think you're totally entitled, especially if you're Sasha Banks or especially you're Naomi. You've been there for a long time. Uh, you you have some pull and you have some ability to use that pressure to kind of adjust storylines that make no sense. And, you know, I, I think this scenario here, I, this I agree with you, this is probably was a pile-on over months and months of stuff going on, right? I, I cannot imagine that their reason to walk out of this company during a TV show, right, during the TV show, was because they were both set to win and face the champions. I, I can't imagine that that's the fact because... How do you, I mean, this is your job. Your job is to go out there, wrestle. They weren't put in an embarrassing situation. They were put in a situation mm -hmm. where they were both going to be profiled as, you know, main, main event matches. You know, may not be the main event, the main event, but it is a main event caliber match. Sasha Banks facing Ronda Rousey is a big match. Uh, Naomi and, and Bianca is a big match that I would want to see. They were set, Naomi was set to win on, on Monday. So they weren't getting buried, but... Whatever happened, this is this had to have happened before this, and they finally hit that wall, and they decided they said hell with this. Now the the, easy, the interesting thing is, and I think you discussed it with Dave uh, on Observer Radio on Saturday morning. Vince played the easy guy here, right? He was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely, we'll figure something out, right? <laughs> Isn't that? But that's his mo. He never, he doesn't yes. go to the talent and, and argue. Over He's always going to be good cop. Yeah, always good cop, right? The producers yeah. were the ones. I I think Molly Mo, was Molly the the producer for that match. I you you would know better than me. I I I got I got it before I go into that. I got to just double check. But you know, I I I don't know. I I, I do. I feel that they should have left on a TV show the day of the TV. No, because that affects everybody else and the talent in that locker room. So you're overall creating a disaster situation for the producers to scramble more, the writers, and there's a lot of innocent people in this. That's how I see this. Honestly, you know? though, though, if they would have gone through with that and then after that match was over, then decided to walk out, I think that would have been worse because you, you, you're, you're building Naomi to be the number one contender um, against Bianca. Yeah. And so she would win that match. And then they walk out after. I think that creates a lot more issues for the writing and for what you're saying you know with their co-workers and such and so that i, th I thought that that's a, a more responsible way to do this than if they would have gone through with the show yeah i i don't know man i i, I think there's a lot of middle here that we don't know and sure. it, it, uh, always, I, always i don't think anybody should read this for face value of what we're seeing online you know even 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 you know whatever like the statement that i put out or Dave put out like there is way more to this that is just you know, the side that everybody was told because WWE PR is a machine 
and they were very quick at 10 o'clock at night to text everybody, <laughs> you know, yeah. their narrative and their well, story. That, that's the other part. And you, you would know more about this than I do. But when WWE wants to get the word out there to filter through the Internet, they go to they leak stuff, right? They leak stuff so that Constantly. people will report it and it will make the talent look bad. Now, a lot of times they're trying to make AEW look bad, but in this sense, they want to make their talent look bad so that they are not the evil corporation. Yeah. And I think if people really understood like how that part uh, of this business works, like this happens in sports uh, all the time. Like if you like if if you're the Lakers, right? You you have LeBron James, who is a media mogul himself, and you have the Lakers. Well, if LeBron James is upset about something, his people may leak something out. Yeah. If the Lakers are upset about something, they leak their something. PR may leak things out to reporters so that they don't look bad. Like this is this happens in real sports all the time. So, I th you know th there's a there's a strategy to this. There's a structure to this, but going back to what you said, this is not that there's so much context and nuance to this. And that's, I think the problem that a lot of people are having yeah. with this story, they want this story to be linear. They want this story to be a plus B equals C. Oh, they're, they're, you know, they were wrong. WWE was right. Or WWE was wrong. Uh, and they were right. But th th that's a linear thing. Like I, I, you cannot ascribe your morals in what you would do in this situation yeah. because it's a different experience. Everybody has a different ex experience, and that is the problem that I think a lot of people have with this story. They want to know who's right and who's wrong, and there's so much nuance and context I involved. You really have to dig deep, and you really have to sort of understand culturally what's going on, and also have you know, your empathy hat on, which a lot of people struggle with. And that's why I think you're seeing so many like, you know, oh, it's got to be this or it's got to be this. No, it does not have to be. It's exactly what you said. Yeah, I, I, I like I don't have a, like I, I don't have a personal opinion on this because I don't know. I wasn't there and, and I hope everybody ends up doing well. And I hope that, you know, whatever happens, it's a positive for everybody involved. But, you know, you can't I, I saw that people are like going nuts on social media they're attacking uh naomi they're blaming they're blaming sasha for naomi leaving that she was brainwashed by sasha i'm like these are grown <laughs> adults that make a ton of money that are famous and they have a lot of resources i don't think anybody was brainwashed into leaving their very high paying job while their husband yep. is also there that i don't that is not the scenario here and, and i think that's and, a bizarre and Sa narrative and sasha knew what was going to happen? She could have predicted that if she walked out, A, they're going to freeze her contract. B, they could, you know, just like she removed them from social media, they could do stuff to her. And then, you know, see the merch thing is a giant piece of their business, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the that that whole thing is 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 a lever that WWE pulled uh, because they can. And uh, now, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, for, for their sake, I hope there's a compromise. I hope there's an agreement. Uh, I hope that they come back to work with what they feel is, is, is a good, solid working environment for them. Um, but that may take time. And, and yeah. who knows? And, and you, know, you know what WWE wants, right? What WWE wants is for them to come back and for them to make happy face and for WWE to go see you should not do that because look at what they lost and they had to come back to essentially the same thing yeah and it's just scary you know it's a, it's the scare tactic strategy which is is going to work for a lot of the talent it is yeah it's just tons of work them. that way tons of them also on Friday uh, and this came out as a surprise for a lot of people Steph I'm sorry Thursday it was announced Stephanie McMahon put out a tweet Dana, she's taking a leave of absence from WWE. As of tomorrow, this was Thursday, I'm taking a leave of absence from the majority of my responsibilities at WWE. WWE is a lifelong legacy for me, and I look forward to returning to the company that I love after taking some time off to focus on my family. You know, it's been a hard year for them. Uh, yeah. Hunter, Hunter's cardiac event, his heart attack, whatever, however it was worded, uh, was far more serious than people thought it was. Uh, you know, that that is... That is not an easy thing to kind of rebound from mentally, especially when 
you know, you got three kids, teenagers at this point. Uh, you have this very high pressure job that requires so much of your attention. Stephanie's been there for her entire adult life. She's worked at that company. You know, maybe it's, it's wild. Some time I was off. watching. Uh, I was watching 2001 stuff because I'm. I started working on a on a project for 2001 stuff, but I've kind of put it by the wayside because it's just I just don't have enough time. But she's all over that yeah. show. It's like the Stephanie McMahon show. Like she's in like most of the segments. Uh, she's great as a 20. Oh, oh she's so been, uh, yeah. A uh, 25 year old, 25. Yeah. Yeah. 24, 25. Like she's tremendous in that role. And uh, yeah, like, sh like, like you said, her entire sort of adult life has been with this company. Uh, so Hunter's back to work. Uh, and that's, that's something a lot of people missed. I, I believe he had gone back a little while ago. It's not that he just went back. He went back a month or so ago, or maybe a little over a month. Uh, yeah. he's been there for, for a little bit. Um, you know, I, you never want to dig into personal stuff. I never dig into personal stuff ever, uh, ever, ever, ever. I hate talking about it. But, you know, listen, it is time maybe to focus on your family. You got two, you got teenage daughters. Your husband had this, you know, issue. Maybe you want to just refresh. And there's nothing wrong with that. She's not leaving the company. She will be back. Just take a little bit of time off and, and to figure out, you know, re recharge, I guess. You need it after being... Uh, she's worked consistently... In, in the same company since she was 16 years old, right? 14, 15, 16 years old, she was working in the warehouse and she was a secretary or, or uh, yeah, I think I think she was a secretary, right? She was the front door girl. I, For a little you, bit. You would know better than me on that. I think so. Because you guys are besties. So. I've seen a picture of you guys Oh, yeah, together. we're besties. We, yeah, yeah, we hung out. It was, <laughs> it was actually a great night, I, you know? She, you know, uh, it's funny because... You know what she said to me? She's like, listen, you got to tell, tell Dave, like, you got it. You got to be hosting Observer live on Sundays, okay? Your yeah, hair looks 100%. great. You got a wonderful tan, and that's what I did. I went. I went to Tony and I went to Dave. And I'm like, listen, this is what Steph said, and they said, okay, you got to do Sundays now. That's how it Wait, worked. The did, whole situation. Uh, did, I, th I thought I saw that John Alba beat you for best hair or something. I don't want to talk about John Alba and his hair. <laughs> All right, I don't want to deal with that 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 guy, John Alba and his hair. Uh, no, you, listen, you know the, is... the 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 Steph thing. Uh, it's so funny because so. There's a certain part of this fan base that doesn't like Stephanie because of her character, right? She was yeah. always playing the side of the WWE talking figure. And also, you know, she she was running creative when when their business started going down and the creative was pretty bad. And, you know, she was not good at that job and she's no longer doing that job. But when I look at who the face of that company is. Uh, I think she does a great job in 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 that marketing role that that she has the branding role or whatever because you have a working mother, somebody who grew into this family. You know, I think uh, you know if we go back and read some observers, Shane was originally pegged to be kind of the next one, right? And then yeah. Shane has been in and out, and Stephanie has been the stalwart in that company. And so I think, you know, she she deserves a lot of credit for for the role. And and here's another thing. Working moms in general, that's a hard job. She's Very. got two full time jobs. And so my hope is that this is just sort of a burnout thing and she feels the need to spend time more time at home. I hope that there's nothing wrong. You know, there's no health issues going on. There's no problems on the homestead. I, I very much hope that that is the case and that. It is an acknowledgement of, hey, being a working mom for all of these years, doing two full time jobs is really hard. Very. And now it's time. Now it's time to, to take some time away. Yeah, man. Uh, and she'll come back. And, you know, she's she's the legacy of that company. She also has two and a half, uh, two and a half points in that company, two and a half percent of that company. I think it's estimated 116 like, million or so where I saw the yeah. last time I saw. Yeah, she's pretty she's pretty engraved in that in that in that business. So I, I don't see her going away or anything, but we'll you know, we'll see what happens. I, I hope for the best for for everybody there. Uh, let's talk about the big story here. We're going into double the road to double or nothing. You're going to be there. Uh, what did you get in Friday, right? I get in Friday. We get in literally at the same time, I think. OK, cool. We'll carpool me, you and Dave. Yeah. No, we, we have a car. So I, I oh, got perfect. it all set up. Oh, we got man, we got a car. Great. Uh, 
Co- Corey, the the great Corey, who uh, he he drives a, a truck as his profession. He's coming down, so he's got a pretty big truck, and he's gonna be able to take us. You know what? You know what though? Rampage is early. Rampage is like at like we're gonna get we're gonna get into Vegas. We're gonna drop off our bags, get something to eat, and we're already gonna have to go to the Rampage to to the building to see Rampage. Are you going to Rampage? I am going to Rampage. Yes, okay. I'm going to Rampage. It's a so. five thirty. Uh, Eastern start time because I guess they're preempted, right? Or, or yeah, yeah, the same Forbid. dance that they've been doing yeah. because of the playoffs. Yeah. So two thirty that show starts. So two, I guess one thirty. We got to be. So I mean, it's gonna be quick, but man, nothing better than that. So the, the, yeah. we're gonna have so much free time, which is gonna be fantastic. So we got Rampage happening. I think the the big match is Ruby Soho and Chris Stratlander. Uh, in the Owen tournament on Rampage. Uh, Dynamite is also in Vegas. So a lot of people are going to be coming in on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we're going to get Kyle O'Reilly and Samoa Joe for the semifinals of the Owen Hart tournament. Dr. Britt Baker and Tony Storm also in the semifinals for the women's side of the tournament. FTR versus Rapungi Vice for the Ring That's of Honor. Match. That is going to be fun. For the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship, Jungle Boy versus Ricky Starks versus Swerve Strickland. Uh, MJF versus Wardlow in a, sh- this is weird, right? In a steel cage match with MJ, I'm sorry, MJ, this is not right. Spears. It is not yeah. MJF. You know what? This was the first <laughs> time it happened on this show. You know what? Congratulations to our producer, Matt. MG Geek writes all our show notes and he will always mess up on something. <laughs> I mean, always. And this is the first one he did on Observer Live. So kudos to him. The uh, bender. So we're going to have uh, Spears versus Wardlow in a steel cage with MJF as the ref and Adam Page and CM Punk face to face. I'm sure a bunch of other stuff's going to happen here as well. But, the, you know, it's going to be a fun week in Vegas. Double or nothing. Here's the card here. A lot of matches on the pre-show. Hook and Danhausen versus Tony Nese and Mark Sterling. Excited for this. So did, did, you, the, did you like their little uh, video package thing on Rampage? Did you see it? Uh, of him like working out, uh, yeah, the workout yeah, yeah, video. Yeah. yeah, it was great. I thought that was cute. Yeah, very good job. Uh, Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews versus Pac, Penta, and Ray Phoenix. Uh, Anarchy in the arena match. That is what they are calling this. Jericho uh, and his entire crew versus Moxley, Danielson, Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Young Bucks and the Hardys. Are you excited for this match? Do you want to see the Bucks and the Hardys? Okay, so we talked about this on We're Live Pal this week. I still, I I, I imagine the match is going to be really good because those guys want it to be really good, right? But I still feel like the anticipation going into this match is more along the lines of, we like the Bucks. We like the Hardys. We know the history. It's going to be fun, and we're okay with it. Because I, th- I, I think that w- there's not really an angle to it, and I think it's been a little flat. But by the end of that show, I think it'll be okay, and we'll be happy with the result. I, I just find it... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I found that the, the Hardys have kind of brought the Bucks down a little bit rather than the Bucks raising the Hardys up a little bit. Yeah, I, it's been weird. I, I'm curious if it had to do with Jeff being in that tournament, if that kind of took it took away from it a little bit because you were distracted with him doing other things. He had that match with Darby that kind of really uh, was the story there, right? It wasn't that the Bucks and the Hardys are going to be are building to a program. It was like Jeff Hardy's still killing himself here. Uh, I don't know if that hurt it in a way, but listen, I'm excited to see it in the arena. You know, that's yeah, going to be a great sure. match to watch. It'll be uh, fun oh, for sure. Yeah. It, it's it's it, but it's more like a this is a hardcore uh, AEW fan match rather than like you know like like if you compare it and it's hard to compare because CM Punk uh, has been so great. But like CM Punk and, and Page, that feels like a main event. There is some stuff yeah. bubbling there. Like you could see those guys. I don't know if there's dislike between the two of them, but. They're playing it like there is, and and I and I, I can feel it. MJF and Wardlow, same thing, right? There is heat on yeah. top of heat on top of heat for that program. For this one, it's just kind of like a oh, we we you know 
these teams are cool. And you know what I wonder, though, is the last two Dynamites, Jeff Hardy has been in the main event segment, and they've had to go, they've had to go faster probably because they didn't have enough time for that main event. Yeah. So I wonder if there was more subtleties that were going to happen at the end of those matches, but that they couldn't because they didn't have enough time. Well, especially time. last week. Last week, they, they, yeah. they like... Like it was like a it was like a nitro ending in ninety seven. Yeah, they totally ran out of time. Like yeah, things are still happening. They haven't finished, and then the just black screen, and you went right into American yeah. Dad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> blink blink of an eye. Uh, you know, I, but you know what's interesting about the structuring of this pay per view? What's the mega match on this show? I think you have two. I think the biggest match from the television is the MJF Wardlow match. See, I have one, but for me, okay. I only feel that it? the main event, it, it like the, which I'm not complaining about this. I think all the matches are going to be great, but this is yeah. interesting that that because you took you took Jer you took Danielson, you took Moxley, you took Jericho, mm -hmm. and you put him in 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 a in that in the your Anarchy Arena match, right? So yeah. they don't have a singles match that leads to something here. The only big deal singles match, in my opinion, like that that you're like, okay, what happens now is Hangman and CM Punk. Which mm -hmm. I, I think that's good. I think they need to do that because Hangman was not the focus for a while. No, I, I'm fine he, with know, that. He's been he's been overshadowed a little bit, right? With uh, with CM Punk, um, you know the CM Punk is the the like he's their top guy right now, even though he doesn't have the title. And I don't know if he's going to win the title this weekend, but at some point he probably will. But, you know, this is Paige's uh, first time in this role. And I'm sure, you know, you read you read through the archives of history of people who've been given the first championship like Jericho. Right. Like when Jericho beat um, Austin and, and Rock in the same night, he was not the top star in that company. He was like fourth yeah. or fifth. Yeah. And, you know, he, he writes about that in his books. So. I think Paige, what, what what stands out about Paige is his match quality is so high and he, his intensity, um, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's, it, his intensity is not over the top big, right? It's sort of boiling. And I like that about him, but it also means when you have such a giant personality like CM Punk, you're going to be overshadowed a little bit. Now, I want to go back to one thing. So you don't think MJF and Wardlow feels that same that that same fire as as you do with the main event. I don't have the same. No, I'm into it. I want to see how that plays out for sure. Um, I, I the last two weeks kind of pulled me out a little bit. I don't know why. Hmm, interesting. That's yeah, interesting. I, I, like I want to see it. I'm excited to see it. There's no like, but I I feel like when you're watching this card, that's the big match for me. Like that yeah. is the match. Uh, and it's great because it's the main event. It's the main event, and it should be like that, right? We also have Thunder Rosa and Serena Deep, which is going to be a fantastic match. Uh, I would like to see Serena Deep win the title. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I would like to see that Me happen. Too. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Keith Lee Swer and, and Swerve versus Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. This is going to be a lot of fun. Maybe it's time to pull the title and then leave a little deception between Christian and Jungle Boy here and build into something because i do think that jungle boy needs a singles run yeah me too i, I i'm 100 whatever tnt title wherever you go with that um yeah. i do too but okay so do you think because christian made these matches right christian is sort of the leader of this team even though he doesn't wrestle and on dynamite it looked I think we were supposed to believe that Jungle Boy was frustrated with some of those decisions. Jungle Boy kind of made a, a goofy face. Uh, I think it was supposed yeah. to be dismay of Christian making these things. So do we think that on Dynamite, something happens where Jungle Boy gets a little bothered with Christian, and then at the pay-per-view, maybe we get the full turn that we've been waiting for, and then it, we move on to the Jungle Boy-Christian uh, singles feud. Yeah, I'd like that. I like I mean, it's a story that's well told, you know? Uh, let's see. Oh, we also have Jade versus Anna J for the TBS championship. Okay, right, is that cool. gonna break the is that gonna break the record, the AEW record of fastest pin? Because that's what I want to see. Oh, on a paper. I just want to see just destruction. I just want to see like be. Anna J comes in, boom, misses a clothesline and finisher match over. That's what I want to see. And then we got the finals for both the men's and the women's Owen tournament, Owen Hart Foundation uh tournament. 
Adam Cole versus Samoa Joe or Kyle O'Reilly? Should it be Joe or should it be O'Reilly? I think it should be Joe. Uh, I think O'Reilly would be interesting, but the problem with the O'Reilly thing is if you watched NXT, like that was the feud for like six months, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly from like last year. Yeah. So I would keep them apart just for that reason, because I'm just like, oh, we, we saw a ton of that. Uh, but also just for the natural sort of baby face heel reaction, I think will make for a better match. And uh, we have Britt Baker or Tony Storm versus Ruby Soho or Chris Stratlander. Uh, I don't know who it should be. Should it be? Uh, maybe. Where, where do you see that falling? So I think most people think it's going to be Britt and Ruby. Um, that is probably going to be your your biggest match it's not going to be the best wrestling match because tony storm is, is is a better wrestler than Britt baker that's the match that i would rather see i want to see tony storm upset Britt in some way mm. and face ruby uh statlander it seems like they're renewing the push with her she looks pretty impressive yeah she does um, i like, I like night, her new look too yeah the, the, the you know, color she, difference she beat, she beat red velvet and and so uh, you know, I, I think the one that I want is Tony Storm and Ruby Soho, but I don't think we're going to get that one. Yeah, uh, we are not here next week because we will be at the show. So that's why I want to spend time on this a little bit today. Listen, overall, it's going to be a fun show, man. I I'm excited for this show. Uh, are you and I sitting together? Like, are I we think sitting so. in the same row? Yeah, okay. I, think, I think we're next to each other. We can figure okay, it good. out. I don't know for yeah. Rampage. Maybe Tony set that up for us, but we got a busy no, I, I, I we got a busy yeah, week. I, I don't know what where I got. I got a couple rampage tickets. I literally have no idea who who else is going. So, but I mean, you know, we'll, uh, may, we'll maybe they're maybe they're in the section close by at least. Yeah. Uh, and then all Friday we just have time to hang out and do stuff. Saturday we got a busy schedule. Saturday night sweet you party, and I are hosting baby. a sweet party uh, at the Cosmo. Are tickets still available? Uh, Possibly I don't a couple. Think so no, I don't think so. But. You know, we, we do need some, you know, if, if if we can get a couple of guests, that would be a nice, easy way to get in, right? That would be a nice, very nice, easy way to get in. So uh, we'll talk about that on uh, this week. I'm sure we'll figure yeah. something out. Uh, I did want to spend some time on SmackDown here. I, I skipped yes. over it earlier, but a lot of stuff transpired on SmackDown that, um, let me pull up the notes here. There were a couple interesting things here. One, LA Knight, new name. <laughs> Max Dupree, male model. No, agent. Well, wait, wait. You gotta say it like he said it. Oh, uh, you do it. You do it. No, well, I can't even. I, I'm not even sure it's Dupree. Like, does he go du up with the? He pre goes up. I, I, I texted you because we're both big Howard Stern fans, and it, and it goes back to the WNBC. WNBC. Thing. Max <laughs> Dupree. Uh, <laughs> so, listen, this guy has had three aliases. Uh, you I know. know. Poor guy. Eli Drake. I mean, what's better? why does Eli LA Drake? Knight not work? But why does LA Knight not work in this scenario? Isn't LA Knight a better name for this character than Max Dupree? Max Dupree, male model agent. Nice to meet you. So he can hand his business card to people. Uh, <laughs> I, for LA Knight, what is an LA? LA Knight was a guy from LA that that that's an honorable fighter, I guess. That's how they I, came yeah, up with I the name because it's K N I G H T. Uh, Eli Drake. Or maybe what was he's, wrong with uh, that? yeah, yeah. Eli well, Drake, male model, male model <laughs> agent. D does that work better than Max Dupree? I would, I would just call him what he really is, which is like a stone cold and rock cosplayer. But I guess that's too long of a name. <laughs> I mean, dude, the, the guy. I, it, listen, it could work. Max Dupree. It's not the dumbest name we've heard. Better than Butch. No, it's fu yeah, it's, it's way better than Butch. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. Uh, he's a great talker, right? Like he. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I, I enjoy his catchphrases necessarily, but um, it's just interesting how I guess it's because of his age. Maybe they, they don't want him to be a wrestler or maybe he will start wrestling after this character. I, I believe he will course, be wrestling. We'll I, I, I asked because a lot of people there is there is a giant L.A. Knight fan base. OK, yeah, like way bigger. Like, listen, the dude's great, but a, a very aggressive online L.A. Knight following that that i had no idea existed it's almost as ag aggressive as like the sasha banks followers you know every day dude i'm not even kidding you i wish this was an exaggeration i wish i could i was exaggerating this i get dms and i get messages asking me if la Knight is going to be wrestling this is like every couple days 
constantly and it's not one person it's multiple people it's like six people every other day or every couple days i will get a message asking me what i know about la night it's always the same answer i have no idea what they're doing as far as i know that he's going to eventually wrestle okay but doesn't that say something about wwe in that you know i i wouldn't compare uh max dupree and, and sasha banks uh necessarily because you know he's he's been on nxt forever but you know the the very loud fan base who is like you know this is my person and i'm gonna stand for them you don't you don't necessarily have that with male wrestlers who have been pushed well right like you usually yeah. have that when it seems to a fan base that okay why isn't this person in in a higher role than 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 they currently are like they like that's a disconnect with with some of the fans, but I find it so interesting because, you know, Sasha Banks's fan base gets uh, credit for being vociferous and you know what it is. Uh, uh, female pop stars, Mariah Carey. Uh, she has, I forgot what she calls her fan, the lambs or something, but they're very similarly like, look, Mariah Carey is, is a giant star and, and, you know, she doesn't get enough credit. And then the, the Beyonce hive, right? The Bay hive. Like the same thing, like it's the same thing of like, you know, Beyonce is great. She doesn't get enough credit. We're going to stand for Beyonce. And I, 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 I like the fact that Sasha has this vociferous fan base who's who's like, look, she is way better than anybody gives her credit for. And we are showing you by the numbers of this fan base. I think it's actually kind of cool. It's like a, a nice little little thing to have in your corner when, uh, you know, when your fans are screaming for you the loudest. Yeah, listen, I, I, you want every, you want your fan base to be, you know, like that and defend you and, and to support you. Uh, the big story here, there were two things. One, Xavier teased a mystery partner for him and Kofi. I'm curious about this. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. Like, who's so, out there? I don't know. I'm sure it's not going to be a, a big surprise or, or, you know, something that people are going to be like, oh, my God. I'm just thinking, I like, is there, in, is there anybody in NXT... But you know, ever so, so John LaRock and I on on the Fight Game podcast, we made a decision three weeks ago to stop covering NXT, and haven't watched it since. <laughs> I I I have such great difficulty. Like I I I watch it as much as I can. I watch all the clips. I read all the things. But it, it's become one of those shows for me that I don't have to watch anymore. And it's so unfortunate I think, I think because for... there's some great talent on there. It just you know. Uh, Listen, they're 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 getting anywhere from five hundred and twenty five thousand to six hundred and fifty thousand on the high end, uh, the, on a Tuesday. They're okay in the sixes. I mean, as far as I know, if they stay in the sixes, it's okay. But I mean, their their demo numbers were really wild, right? Like, no women watched NXT in the key demo this week. Uh, <laughs> they they've kind of they've told you that it's not an important show to watch once again, and. I know that they're in a rebuilding phase there, and that's fine. And they're 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 veering into something else. But you know what's fascinating here is that everybody that that was there was played a pivotal part that left is now saying the same exact thing that the reason why they went back they went to this version is that the black and gold era veered off into something it was never intended to be, which is a hundred percent true. It was mm -hmm. never intended to be a super indie that traveled. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, well, you know, you, they were trying to take advantage of where the wrestling industry was going, right? Like they they saw uh, an opportunity to. Uh, I, I I I fully feel that it went that route because they saw what would happen when they'd run WrestleMania, and then you'd get all these fans who wanted to come watch also the shows that were surrounding WrestleMania from these other companies. And they're like, well, we could do that as well. And we could get another house out of this and maybe put a stop to some of these other shows, but it didn't exactly work out that way. But I, I, think it I would say it heightened uh, independent professional wrestling. I think NXT was yeah. a big height. Hei it heightened it, that it didn't whole era. It. it didn't. I do think it did. It The thing that suffered the most was ring of honor, ring of honor, uh, their demise started because of NXT really ramping up and becoming, I, I mean, I'm using that term a super indie, really loosely here. I'm, I'm having fun with it, but you took the best of the best. You took yeah. whoever was available, you know, a guy like Ricochet that was doing, you know, PWG and evolved and, and, and pretty much every major indie territory, uh, 
uh, he was a big star, and you took him. You took Adam Cole from Ring of Honor. You took uh, you took uh, Kyle O'Reilly. You took. Uh, I mean, they essentially raided all of Ring of Honor. Between that and and AEW starting, that was a real nail in a coffin for them. But there's still tremendous amounts of talent now. They've gone bo- more into a production house more than anything else. Yeah, which is most of that stuff is really bad, right? Like the the worst thing about that show. Uh, I okay, so I'll say Joe Gacy has changed the channel heat with me. And that's not to say that the guy who is behind that character, like this is just about his character. I'm just over it. I just thought it was bad from the beginning. And now he's in the main event, so he's in so many segments. But the worst part of NXT is all of these segments that I sort of feel were written for Raw. They said, no, this is not good enough for Raw put them on NXT. I yeah. really feel that because they're so dumb and they and and they make the talent look bad. Um that that's the worst part of that show to me. I want to uh let's get back to SmackDown really quickly uh and talk about this main event, something that wasn't bad. Uh the Usos yeah, really defeated good. RK Bro to unify the SmackDown and Raw titles. Afterwards, the Bloodline beat down RK Bro. Uh it, th- there were kids crying. I mean, yeah, it, I got, it got everything they wanted to get from this. I thought it was very well done. But where do you go from here now? Yeah, it's a good question. And I was actually going to ask you because so if the world title and the tag straps um, are unified and whatever they do with these women's tag straps, there's only one. So they, they are essentially a unified belt, too. Is this just an excuse to get the talent to be able to jump from side to side? Because they're sort of doing that already. Like, there's no real reason for yeah. for the you know for for the talent to be jumping to different shows. But maybe this is like, oh, like we need you know we we have we're doing during the summer doldrums. You know, we need to do something to make the TV shows uh, a little bit more interesting. And so let's just have you know let's just mix up the brands and 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 do it that way. I, I so <laughs> I was told that to expect some of this a little bit more where you're gonna see people go from brand to brand. It's not gonna yeah. be an overall change in like the brand extension in any way. They're not killing the brand extension, but they are gonna have, you know, key players going on each show eventually. Like I can see Cody going on SmackDown. Absolutely. Sure. Uh I you know, now that you have the Usos, I, listen, this makes the most sense. One champion. Every title's now unified. Essentially, right? Your tag titles are unified. There's one tag title. There's one women's tag title. There's one men's world title. Uh, the women have two titles right now, but I don't know if the goal is to unify those eventually. But you you have to come up with a plan and figure out. Okay, what do we do from here? Do we need? Should Roman be on both t- both uh, TV shows? Should the champion be on both? I think so. But what happens when you have a Brock Lesnar that wins a title? <laughs> then you have no world champion on either either channel. So I, I know it's a major shift in philosophy for them to have a single title. And, you know, it's kind of done in a way that they could reset it if it doesn't work. Where they could just I feel have like that's one title what, what they're doing, though. I feel like they're going to have the unified belts. And then when they need a big program with stipulations, that's when they decide, OK, we're just going to go back to how it was before. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I think it makes it more interesting. I've always liked it better this way because what it does is it also moves the intercontinental championship and the U S championship up a, a that's level the hope. because then that's the hope that it should, if the, if the booking is smart, it should, because then those, those titles become a little bit more important because they are the brand titles. Um, so like I, you know, to me, you should put those titles on the next guys right like drew mcintyre should get a run with the u.s title um i i I don't remember which belts are on which shows that shows you how i got i got such an easy solution here you ready drew wins the u.s title right before the cardiff show and when he debuts in cardiff he comes out with the european title (laughs) that would be cool that'd be really cool cool. But you know, right D-Lo. now, also- D-Lo, D-Lo comes in. D-Lo is comes in his in. corner. Yeah, yeah. D'Lo's in his corner. The greatest <laughs> European champion of all time, <laughs> D'Lo Brown. Uh, great gimmick when they used to. When they wouldn't they bill him from different places in Europe every week. I, oh man, I don't even remember. I, I kind of remember but that. I kind of remember D-Lo. that. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you could do that. But right now, the uh, the rumor for Roman's opponents are Matt Riddle, mm-hmm. Roman Reigns. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry, Matt Riddle, uh, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre. That's the next yeah. three lineup, which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and then we, we've kind of been talking about that, too. Like, using using Randy Orton's renewed uh, fan interest, you know, in a way where he's also now, he, he's back to being a legitimate title contender. People will, are going to want to see him beat Roman. He's going to be so good at these hope spots of, you know, the RKO out of nowhere, and people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, is he really going to win? And then he's not going to win, but it'll be a great match. If Riddle's the next contender, though, Man, they really beat him dead on uh, on Friday. Yeah. Uh, well, he got this is twice now, right? Yeah. Talk about talent getting buried. This is twice. <laughs> First time Roman <laughs> destroyed him, and now it's now it's uh, the Usos and everybody. You know the whole the the the, the triad. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Interesting stuff here, but we got a we got a big week of wrestling happening coming up obviously uh wwe's doing their thing right now the sasha situation and and the naomi situation is still up in the air and definitely suspended so who knows how long that's gonna be you know i was thinking when is the last time wwe did this publicly where they you know tried to embarrass their talent because something happened that they weren't happy for right happy about or they walked out obviously austin took his ball and went home right yeah that's one brett Montreal is another. Sure. When they came out and buried I don't really, I, I, Yeah, I, I, I was trying to think of that, if there had been any big ones that were Warrior. forgetting. But you know what? Warrior, 96. Warrior. They ran yeah. that. They ran uh, the Gorilla Monsoon, announced that he no-showed an event, and they suspended him indefinitely. So those are the three that I can think of. I can't think of anything else, really. It's had to have happened. It just probably wasn't that big of a deal. Because it was like a lesser talent or something. Because those, because these are major talents, right? These are like maybe big Hogan. time. Maybe Hogan. Like I have a feeling hmm. they did that with the Captain, uh, the Captain, uh, Mister America nonsense. Mister America, when he walked yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, I think they did. That, by the way, you want to talk about terrible, terrible? That was terrible. So stupid. <laughs> Not a fan of it. Never was a fan of that. But a lot going on. A lot of stuff. Gary, what are you going to be doing this week? Because I will well, not be on We're Live, pal, on Tuesday. You'll not be you. on We're Live, pal. So in order to, you know, we can't just replace you with one person. <laughs> so instead, we're going to replace you with three people. Uh, I will be still hosting the show. We're going to bring on a co-host who's a sort of a new name. Uh, y- you will know him if you were if you read the website. But uh, he hasn't been on, uh, as far as I know, any podcast. So we're going we're gonna to bring him on. New face to, to co-host with me. And then uh, we're going to bring on, uh, I can tease this one. I'll save the, the last one, uh, give it a little bit of a secrecy. But uh, for people who really understand the lineage of the F4W convention, the man who created it, essentially, Ed in San Antonio is going to open up the show. Wow. Uh, he's, he's doing, a, so for the convention, because we're all going to be in Vegas, he's doing a wrestling show after Brian and Dave's Q&A. So we'll we'll bring him on. He's, he'll he'll talk about his show. He'll talk about the history of the F4W convention. And then to close out the show, I'm going to bring on somebody who uh, is is pre- is pretty big to this website. So I won't say. I'll, I'll let people think about who it big is. Surprise. And then, uh, but but yeah, you know we, we we need we need someone who who's Andrew Zarian's giant shoes oh, to fill. So, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not that giant. I promise you. Uh, but we do have a lot to talk about, obviously. We have a lot going on. Uh, I'll be live with Matt Men on Thursday. That'll be my last show. Friday, I'm out of here. I'll yeah. be, in, I'll be, we'll be in hanging Vegas. out all weekend, man. We'll be hanging out all weekend. Uh, and then I'm flying to L.A. on, uh, on Monday morning. So that's going to be so fun, are you, too. So are you going to, to the Dynamite? No, no, because I'm flying back early. I, I, got, the, I got a 6 a.m. out of uh, LAX. On uh, on, fr- on on Wednesday, so I will not okay. be there. That would have been. I would have loved to stay another day and come back on Thursday, but I, I just have too much going on. Uh, yeah, if that show was on a weekend, or if oh, that was a yeah. pay per view, I think I would have tried to go. But for sure, it's too hard during the week to yeah. to travel. Yeah, especially. I mean, how many hours is that for you? Four hours. Uh, to drive, it's probably about six hours. I would say. Um, I mean, it's a quick flight, but you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna 
fly in and then after the show fly back out you yeah. know this work and stuff and we're going to vegas so yeah just bad timing but i would love to see an a, a big aew show on this side of town yeah guys that's it for this week uh we will not be back next week but we will be back the following week with everything else happening in professional wrestling you can follow me on twitter at andrew zarian we're out of time you can follow garrett where can people follow you uh just go to uh at fight game media which is our, our twitter handle um and the only thing only last thing i would say is go warriors oh yeah listen they're fantastic <laughs> they're, they really are they're fantastic guys we're out of time we'll see you all next week on wrestling observer live see you later